Let's get into God's word this morning. Are you ready for the word of the Lord? All right, let's bow in prayer then. Father God, thank you so much for your precious, precious word. Thank you this morning, Lord, as we open your word, you open our hearts, and we welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us. Above the voice of man, may we hear the voice of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, we're busy with a series called Back to Basics. God's Word gives us the Ten uh, Commandments, which is basically ten basic principles for successful living. God gives us the blueprint for a happy life, for a successful life, for a happy marriage, a successful marriage. And so what I want to do this morning, I want to jump straight in and get into number, number five. We don't have time to recap the previous ones. And so let's look at the fifth one. And, and, and the, the fifth commandment tells us to honor our parents, honor your mother and father. Now, remember, I told you the first four commandments have to do with our relationship with God. The last uh, 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 six commandments have to do with our relationship with people. And so really, it's, uh, it's the vertical relationship, our relationship with God, if you can just see it like that, and then the horizontal relationship like that. So they're two very distinct sections. And that's why when Jesus gave us the great commandment, what was he doing? He was summarizing all of the commandments. He was saying all of these commandments are taken up in this one Love God, love people. Two sections. Love God and love people. Remember that's what he said, Matthew 22, verse 37. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Those two sections. Now, we're starting off, and Lord willing, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be spending time on those last six ones. This is the section that has to do with our interaction and our relationships on this level. And what's interesting, what I want you to see is God starts this whole thing off with family, with parents. He puts an emphasis on, on parents and he says, I want you, when you think of this, I want you to start off honoring your, your parents. Why does he do that? I, I think very simply is because if we, can, if we can get that established in us and in our children from, from a very early age, if we can learn this at home and apply it at home, we're going to be able to apply it outside of our homes for the rest of our lives. But if we don't get it there at home, if a, a young one doesn't get it there, they're not going to be able to apply it down the line. All right. Now, I realize, and I, and I want to say this from the, from the onset, I realize this is a touchy subject for some of us. Because I don't assume that we've all come from good homes and godly parents. For some of you, it's really easy to honor your parents. And for some of you, this may be one of the most difficult things that you're ever going to do. Now, let's quickly have a look at that scripture on the screen. I want to show you something. All right, here's the commandment, Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land that, your Lord, that the Lord your God is giving you. Honor your father and your mother. It doesn't say provided they go to Maranatha. And provided they're good parents. And provided nothing. All right? So what I want you to see, there, there's no exception clause given. Nothing at all. It simply tells us to honor our parents. And some of you may have had some horrific parents. And just the thought of honoring your parents brings some pain, brings some discomfort. And, 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 and it just, you can't get your head around that. But remember, whenever God gives us a, a commandment, it's for our own good. And God doesn't give us a commandment that we cannot fulfill. And so although it may seem difficult at first, I want to ask you, just, just stay with me a little bit. Let me just unpack this a, a little bit, and then toward the end, then, then you make up your mind. Now, before we continue, let's quickly clarify. What is a parent? A parent is someone 
who carries pictures where they used to carry money. All right? All right, what is honor? Okay, I think a parenting thing is settled. We know what a parent is. What is honor? What does it mean to honor? Honor simply means to respect or to value. To respect or to show value. You see, honor is something that begins internally and then manifests itself externally. But it starts in the heart. And that's why Jesus said, he says, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so whenever you hear somebody being critical or negative about a parent, it shows what's in their heart, dishonor. Because if there was honor in the heart, it would come out. It would manifest itself in in their speech and in their actions and everything like that. A couple of years ago, I was invited to Cape Town. We had a meeting there with some pastors, just just a small group of pastors that they invited from around the country, and we met together, sat around a boardroom table, uh, and and shared and so on. Uh, and this this one young pastor was a son of a very well known pastor in our country. If I had to mention his name, most of you would know him. And so during the conversation, he made some very negative, critical comments about his dad. I was absolutely shocked. I thought this is crazy. He has a young Christian leader who should know this principle. He's violating a principle. He's violating one of God's commandments. But you see, whatever's in the heart is going to sometime is going to manifest through our speech and, and in our actions. And so it's important that we realize that's where honor starts. Honor starts on the inside, and then it'll flow out in, in, onto, in, in the outside. Now, Why does God tell us to honor our parents? Why? (laughs) Because we've all had imperfect parents. Every single parent is flawed, except, of course, Stevie and Kez's parents, you know. But, but, all right, just just joking. But every single parent is, is flawed. And so God says, I know they're flawed. I know, I know. Because nobody's perfect, but I want you to to honor them. But Leonard, you don't know my parents. You don't know what I've been going through. They really don't deserve honor. I don't respect them. I don't want to be false toward them, you know, by showing them honor. No, no, no. You see, you're doing it because you simply, you want to be obedient to God. They may not deserve it, but you say, God, I want to be, I'm doing it for you. And so what are you doing? You're not honoring the person. You're honoring the position, if that makes it easier for some of you. You're saying it's very difficult to honor this person. Well, then honor the position that God has put them in. Because God says in Romans 13 that all authority is God-given. So God puts them in a certain position. And so we make a decision to honor the position. Remember I said you, I told you about the saying that we had in, in the Air Force. If there's a, a person that you don't feel like saluting, and I don't even respect that person. They used to, they used to remind us, you don't salute the man. You salute the rank. Oh, thank you very much. It makes it a whole lot easier. And so for some of you, you may have to apply that, and you may have to just keep that in mind, make it a little bit easier for you to to do that. Listen, parents don't always get it right. And so we've got to settle that in in, in our hearts. They don't always get things right. It's like this pastor who who left his wife in charge uh, on Sunday. He was ministering at another church, and uh, preaching there, and so he asked his wife to, to preach on the Sunday. So that particular Sunday, true story, she got up early to prepare and, and get ready and pray and go through her notes and so on. And then after that, she had two little daughters, four and five-year-old, little Kay and Sally, and she had to go and wake them quickly, give them breakfast, and dress them, and get the hair done and everything. And this particular Sunday, she wanted to have them look particularly nice, because they were going to sit in the front row with a grandmother because mommy was, was preaching and so on. And so she really wanted them to look nice. And so they had these beautiful little dresses on and everything that just looked like two little princesses. And then she quickly went and she got herself ready, dressed up and did her hair and did the makeup and everything. And when she was finally ready, she realized that they'd run out of time a little bit. And so they were all in the car, the three three girls in the car, and there they went off to church, you know, running a little bit late. And it was on the way to church that the little one, little Kay, said to her mommy, said, Mommy, you forgot to put my panties on. (laughs) And the mom thought, oh, man. There's no ways I can turn back. I'm late already 
Oh, man. And here was the problem. The little one was the boisterous, energetic one. It was the, she was the one who was guaranteed at some stage to be doing cartwheels somewhere. And so the mom's thinking, oh, man, I can't. What am I going to do? That's when she turned to the slightly older one, to Sally. And she said to Sally, Sally, take your panties off and give it to Kay. <laughs> so what is my point? You say, Leonard, what on earth is your point? My point is simply this. Our parents don't always get it right. Isn't that true? Okay. All right. And so maybe your parents are a little bit of a pain right now. I want to do a survey. I want you to put up your hands. Not if your parents are a pain. I have something else, all right? But I want you to put up your hand if some mother went through labor pains for you. Can you, can you put up your hands? If some mother went, up, went through labor pains. Oh, some of you got no idea what happened that day. All right. <laughs> My point is, you caused her tremendous pain, so I think you're even now, all right? Cut her slack. So if you think your mother's causing you pain and heartache, just just make some room, you've done the same, all right? Now, one of the trends in our society today is that we, we tend to idolize the youth and almost demonize older people. Let me explain. Society is so caught up in in the youth and and technology and media and everything, if you think about it, revolves around the youth. And so to a large extent, the older people are just being somehow just being dropped along the way because they just can't keep up anymore. I mean, I can't even keep up. And so I'm so glad Mark's not here this morning. He would have chirped. But... So what happens is everything revolves around the youth, and and, and so so the older people are just being moved out. And if you had to go back 100 years, not hundreds of years, 100 years, you'd find a very, very different culture. You would find a culture where where wisdom and experience was held in high regard, where where older people were, were respected and honored, but somehow not in our culture anymore. That's happening less and less. And a hundred years ago, young people would absolutely taught and drilled to respect older people. It happens less and less these days. And here's the sad part. Do you know that they say our Western culture is the only culture that doesn't honor our elders? The Eastern cultures do. And most of the African cultures do. But our Western culture somehow... We don't do that anymore. And we even find that as as pastors. When we sit with young people and they're going through a difficult time, we'll ask them, we'll say to them, have you talked to your parents about this? And they they like look at us as if, are you crazy? Why would I ever want to do that? Because they're old. And sometimes they will say to us, they can't even put their own lives together. How do, how do you expect us to listen to them? But you, you know what I've found, and, and this is what I've shared with younger people in the past. Listen, just because they've messed up in their own lives doesn't mean they know what's good for you or they don't know what's good for you. Just because they've made some mistakes, which they have, they know they want to keep you from those mistakes. And so every parent will still give good advice, even though they're not applying it themselves, but they want their children to apply those things. Let me show you from Scripture. Let me me show you. Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Now I want you to notice something. It doesn't say if they serve God, if they Christian, if they're putting it all together in their lives, then you do that. No, it just tells us, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. That's crazy. But there's a lot of, a lot of truth and a lot of wisdom in that. 
Because our parents know what's good for us. And then it says this, bind them upon your heart forever and fasten them around your neck. In other words, carry those instructions with you for the rest of your days. It says, when you walk, they will guide you. And when you sleep, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will speak to you. You know, one of the first things that I did when I came onto staff here at Maranatha around 2000, I used to be in business and then I got out of that and I, I joined the staff. But I joined the staff as, as the 20s pastor back then. One of the first things that we did is we put on a high T for the senior citizens of, of the church. And so as a 20s group, we dressed up suits and, and everything, and the girls were dressed beautifully, and we served all the older folks in the church, and we blessed them. We just went to town. We laid it on. Why? Because we wanted to show them we love you. We respect you. We value you. We, we honor you. You're part of, of, of us here in this church. And right up until today, you'll find people in their 90s still attending this church. Here's Uncle Peter sitting right in the front in his 90s, still coming to this church. Oh, the music is loud. The lights are bright. The smoke is thick. But they, yeah, you know why? Because it's their church. They belong. And that's what family is about. Family is not just about the, the new generation, the young generation, but about young and old. Oh, we need the new generation. We need the youngsters and their enthusiasm and their passion and their creativity and all of that. But I'm telling you, we need the older people as well. We need that, that working together because together we are stronger. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's give the older people a hand. One of the saddest stories in the Bible is the story of, of King Solomon's son, Rehoboam. Rehoboam succeeded his, his father in about 975 BC, about a thousand years before Christ. But I want to just backtrack a little bit. We'll, I'll touch on Rehoboam now. I want to just tell you quickly about his father, about King Solomon. You see, Solomon was renowned, renowned in, in, in the ancient world for his wisdom and his tremendous, tremendous wealth. And so it was during his reign that the kingdom gained its highest splendor. The, 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 that specific time in, in Israel's history is known as, as the golden age, the golden years. It was a very special time, very successful time for him. And so Solomon was a prolific builder, developer. And so he, he's the guy who built the temple for the Lord. And then after that, he builds this magnificent palace for his new wife, the daughter of uh, the Egyptian pharaoh. Uh, and, but remember, he had some other wives as well. He didn't only have her. He had another 700 wives and 300 concubines. Don't know what he was thinking. Clearly he wasn't doing much of that. All right. And so he had, he had a thousand wives, basically. And so you can imagine he's not going to build a small little palace. He's got to build a massive palace to, to house all of them. It took seven years to build the temple, 13, almost double years to build this palace. It was a magnificent place, very opulent. Built a massive big wall around Jerusalem. Built waterways, water channels, built water, water reservoirs, rebuilt some of the, the cities that had been burned down and, and broken down during wars and things. He rebuilt those things. It was amazing. But all of this building and development and everything, which is, which is all spectacular, required money, taxes. And on top of that, he needed a labor force, and they didn't have slaves then. And so what happened? He enlisted the people. There was basically a tax where they had to give some of their time, almost like we had to do some years ago with national service, where it was it, uh, you, you, you had to do national service, and so it was exactly the same for them. They had a forced labor force. They, they had to do that. And so you can imagine as the years went on, oh, the nation was just building and, and was just magnificent and beautiful, but at the expense of the people. And so the people were paying for it, and the people were building it, and the people were tired. They'd had enough of this thing. And so now Rehoboam comes into power. And within the first couple of days in office, the people come to him. 
and they say, listen, please, something has got to change. You're our only hope. Your, your father was heavy on us. Taxes were heavy and, and the workforce and the labor force and everything. Please, you've got to change something. So he does a smart thing. He doesn't make a decision right there on the spot. He says, let me go and think about it. And he does an even smarter thing. He goes to his father's advisors, the older guys, the guys who've been around for many years, and he goes and asks them for advice. He says, what do you guys say? What should I do? And they advise him. That's a great idea. You, you lower the taxes. You scrap this. You scrap that. Man, you'll win the people. They'll be loyal to you for the rest of your life. Okay. But he thinks, hang on. Let me go and talk to my buddies over here. And so he goes to their buddy, to his buddies. They're all on their iPads. They, they're going, you know. And so he says to them, boys, boys, just put that stuff down. What do you guys think? And they say, what? Lower the taxes. You mad? You show them who's the boss. You say to them, listen, you see nothing yet. You think the Guptas were bad. You'll see what will happen now. <laughs> and so what does he do? He goes away there and he sends a tweet. But because this is what these leaders did, you know. He tweets. And he tells everybody, you think, you think my father was bad. My pinky is going to be worse than his waist. And you know what happens right there? Ten of the twelve tribes back their bags. Not one or two, not half of them. Ten of the twelve tribes. That, this magnificent kingdom is split in the first couple of days, basically, of him being in office. He splits the kingdom one crazy decision, a life-defining moment. And that's where we have the ten tribes in the north, two tribes in the south. He loses everything, wrecks everything with one crazy decision. Here's, here's the sad part. This guy wasn't 21 years old because then you could almost have a little bit of grace for him. Well, you know, he was young, didn't know much, you know, not much experience. He wasn't 31 years old, but he was 41 years old already. Surely, surely this guy should have had some sense. But you see, the problem is not enough sense to consult the older guys, to go to them and, and, and to get advice from them. He was smart in his own eyes and he made a crazy decision. When I look at Scripture, I just realize we're stronger together. We need young and we need old. We've just asked Pastor Sid and Elvin Hartley to come on to staff. I won't give you his aid because it's very high. <laughs> but he retired recently from a church in Pretoria where he served many, many, many years. And they've just retired. But the way I see it, just because you're 65 years old doesn't mean you've reached your cell by date. There's a wisdom and an experience here that we need on staff. Oh, we need the younger guys. But I'm telling you, we need some of the older people as well. And because we're stronger together. And that's why we've, we've done this. So let's make this practical quickly. I want to just quickly give you three points. How do we honor our, our parents for the rest of our lives? Because I think there are three types of relationships that we have with our parents. The first type of relationship is, 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 uh, that we have with, with our parents is, is as a child, as, as a youngster. Then the next step is as we grow old and we become teenagers or we become young adults. We're still at home. But we're teenagers and we're young adults. So there's a difference how we handle that situation to this situation. And then there's the next step where we become uh, uh, adults ourselves, where we actually leave the home, but we've still got a relationship with our parents. So how do we do that? Let's start quickly with our relationship as children. How do we honor our parents as children? Ephesians 6 verse 1 gives us the answer. Children, obey your parents this is the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. So the Bible makes it very clear. The way that we are now parents as, 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 as children is simply through obedience, obeying, obeying them because God has put them in authority over us. And this is a principle that our children need to learn at a very early age. God wants this established at, at an early age. He wants us to try and, try and teach them how to respond and to react 
to authority. How do we respond and, and react and, and relate to authority? And so that's what we've got to teach them. Because, uh, you see, the way that they get to learn that, or, or let me say their ability to respond or to relate to authority and the harm is going to depend how they will respond and relate to authority outside of the home. And not only that, their ability to respond and relate to authority in the home will determine their ability to respond and relate to authority for the rest of their lives. Because if a child doesn't get it at an early age, you're setting them up for failure. And so that's why when a child grows up thinking, nobody's going to tell me what to do, Whose responsibility is that to change it? Parents, we've got to help them because there's something in us that rises up and we know better. And so the parents have got to, have got to change that because they're going to go to a school. They're going, to be, they're going to be teachers who will tell them what to do. And then later on, they'll get into a work situation. There will be a boss or a manager who will tell them what to do. And they'll be driving their car, and there'll be a traffic department who will tell them what to do. And they'll start earning some money, and there'll be SARS who will tell them what to do. And if they walk around with an attitude of, nobody tell me what to do, well, you can tell them that when you're sitting behind bars. We're setting them up for failure. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans 13.1. Everybody must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Now I want you to hear the next part, verse 2. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. All right? And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. So what he's saying is, if you have a problem with authority, you're going to have problems. That's what he's saying. And you're not only going to have problems with those authorities. He's saying you're going to have problems with the ultimate authority with God. And so ultimately, you're going to have, you're going to have problems with, with God as well. I remember an incident when I was in, in high school, probably I think junior high, I'd just gone into high school, and I had a disagreement with my mother the one day. We were arguing about something. I can't remember what it was about, but I do remember my father was on the phone, uh, on, on, on the landline. Remember, we had those, those things, and so he was, he was on the landline. He was busy with somebody, and I clearly remember him saying to the person on the other side, I will call you back. And he promptly put the phone down and he walked straight over to me and he grabbed me by the collar and he lifted me right off my feet. And he said to me, he says, if you ever speak to your mother like that again, he says, I will knock your teeth out. <laughs> I never did that again. He got my attention. <laughs> All right. These are mine, by the way. All right. <laughs> Now, now, listen, listen, fathers, I'm not recommending that you do that, all right? Don't, don't get the wrong idea. But I do recommend that you take a stand in your home for what's right and what's wrong. And I do recommend that you teach your children to honor because they're not going to get it by themselves. And I believe the reason God gives us this commandment because he wants us to teach our children to honor. And when they get that, they've got it. They set up for the rest of their lives. And God says, you're not going to have problems for the rest of, of, of your life. And so I'm telling you, I thank God for that incident that day. I didn't enjoy it that day. But I needed it. I thank God for that. And so I'm doing the same with my children, not, not grabbing them by the collar, by the way. You can, you can relax. And so we, we had some time ago, and, and, and I'm telling the story with permission. I asked my son, uh, Stephen. And um, so some time ago, we had a situation where every time I ask him to do something, Stevie, will you quickly go and clean your mother's car? <sighs> Stevie, will you quickly go and, and, and clean the pool or something? <sighs> And so we got to a point where he was no longer Stevie. And I said, Stephen, come over here. And I said to him, I said, listen, I never ever want to hear you sighing when I ask you to do something. I said, number one, I said, it's disrespectful. And number two, it hurts me to think you don't want to do something for me. I'll do anything for you. You're my son. 
and I love you. And we're a family. We do everything together and we help one another in this home. I say, from now on, when I ask you to do something, I want to hear two words. Yes, Daddy. Are we clear? Yes, Daddy. <laughs> All right, so how do we honor our, our parents as children? By obeying them with a good attitude. With a good attitude. And then secondly, let's quickly look at the second one. How do we honor our parents as teenagers or young adults? By respecting them. I'm going to give you two scriptures. Leviticus 19.3. Each of you must respect his mother and father. Hebrews 12.9. We all had human fathers who disciplined us. You can say that again. And we respected them for it. Now, respect doesn't mean you don't see their weaknesses. You say, Leonard, what does weaknesses have to do with it? Everything at this stage of life when you're a teenager. Because you see, when you're a child, you don't see your parents' weaknesses. You don't, you, you're not aware of that at all. I mean, most of the time, they're heroes in your eyes. But the moment you start moving into the, the young adult years as a teenager, you become very aware that they've got clay feet. You become very aware that they have faults and weaknesses. And you clearly see those. And the problem is sometimes that's all we see. Isn't that so? And so respect is not reserved for perfect parents, but reserved for every parent. Because if we're going to wait until they're perfect, we're never going to show respect. And at this stage in our lives, when we're teenagers, that's the time where we battle the most with this thing. Because we look at them, we think, ah, oh, man, I don't feel like respecting. Well, then respect the, the position and not the person. And so it's so important that we do that. Maybe you're thinking, oh, Leonard, I don't feel like respecting them. I don't feel like it. Besides, I'd never chose them to be my parent. Well, neither did they. They didn't choose you. They found you one day. <laughs> Isn't it? Most of us. Except if you're adopted. Except if you're adopted. If you're adopted... You were a fortunate few who were chosen. You were picked out. Never forget that. Thank God for that. All right. Last one quickly, then we're done. How do we honor our parents as an adult? By appreciating them. Listen to what it says here in Proverbs 23, verse 22. When your mother is old, show her appreciation. Well, what about the father? Where's the father? No, he went home long time ago. <laughs> so how do we show appreciation? Many different ways. Many different ways. If, if I could sum it up in one word, just make an effort. Effort. Just make an effort. Make that phone call. Invite them over for a quick bri. If you do, just make sure that the steak is nice and tender. That age they can't have. <laughs> All right. Take, get them over for a bra, help them with some practical things in their apartment, in her apartment, if it's just your mother or, you know, uh, we, my brother and myself do that for my mom. She doesn't have to do anything at home. We make sure the garden service is taken care of. We make sure if a place needs, needs to be painted, it's painted. If anything, the garage door packs up, she doesn't try and look for garage door people. She's got Leonard's number on her phone. She phones me. I sort it out for her. Her car needs to go in for a service. I take it in for a service. I drop it off again. And so that's how we show appreciation. All right. So let me, let me bring this to a close quickly for us. I want to go back to that uh, scripture quickly that we looked at right in the beginning, Exodus 20, verse 12, and we have it on the screen. Honor your father and your mother. Now listen to this. Then you will live a long, full life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. It's the first commandment that God gives us with a promise. All the others we've been looking at, the previous four were just commandments God gives us. This is the first one with a promise. And what's the promise? That you'll be blessed and you'll live a long life. And those two together are crucial. 
Because who wants to live a long life if you're not blessed? All right? And so what Scripture is saying, he says, if you will do this, he says, I'll bless you and you'll live a long life. That's why you can find two siblings from the same home, the same parents, the same upbringing, the same, 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 and one is blessed and the other one isn't really. One is really doing well and the other one isn't really. One of the reasons, I'm telling you, you can go and check this out. This one has been honoring the parents. This one, there was a stage in their life where they didn't honor and they lived a wicked life maybe and they didn't follow their parents' advice. And so the Bible is very clear. You follow the Lord instructions here. You honor your parents. You respect elders. God says, man, that touches my heart. I'll bless you for that. Amen. Come on, let's stand. We're in different stages of life here. I want to pray for those of you who need to apply this up because you've got parents who are still alive <laughs> and you've got children that you need to do. It's got kind of my generation. I want to really especially pray for those of you who still have parents and you have children because we've got to apply it both ways. We've got to, we've got to live this stuff and we've got to make sure that we instill it like my father did instill it into us as children and if you've got grandparents grace upon you to be able to help your children and your grandchildren let's pray father here we are this morning we really want to apply this commandment we want to and for some of us it's very very difficult because it's not easy to respect our parents but from today on we want to do it because we want to, we respect your word tremendously. And because we want your blessings upon our lives. And so we're going we're gonna to show honor to the position for now. To the position that they hold. You've put them in that position. And I pray for those of us, Lord, who have even children at home. Help us, Father, to instill this principle. Give us wisdom, Lord, how to instill this in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. All creation cries to you. Worshiping in spirit and in truth. Glory to the faithful one. Jesus Christ, God's Son.